Hi, is anybody there? <laughs> Hi, guys. No way we're telling your friends. Okay, Charlie, plumber fan, what's up? Alexa, stop. Hi, guys. Is that the real Charlie Plumber right there who just went by and waved? Hi, guys. Charlie's going to log on any minute. This is Jessica from a class act, New York. My bangs need some major cutting. Charlie, tell me when you're on. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining. Hi, Brooke. What's going on? Hi, Scarlett. Is that Scarlett? No, that's Georgia Artardi. What's up, Georgia? Hi, Elisa. Hi, Magdaz. <laughs> hey, Danielle. <laughs> Danielle Raymond. Hi, Amy. What's up, Amy? Good to see you again. I need Mr. Charlie Plummer to log on in a minute, and we're going to have a little conversation with Charlie. Yes, I love Charlie a lot, too. He's an incredible actor. You guys have to watch Looking for Alaska on Hulu. We're going to talk about it today, for sure. For sure. Elisa, what's up? Hi, you guys. Hi, McKenna. Yeah, I'm doing... A Amy, are you guys doing okay? And Heike? Is that how I say your mom's name? What's up, Molly? Hi. I hope everybody is safe and taking care of themselves and their loved ones and washing their hands and staying home. Oh, you miss rehearsing every weekend, Jordan? So do we. <laughs> Trust me. We miss you guys. But I did send out a thing asking you to film yourselves and send it back. Hi, Claudia. Hi, Allison. I said that you should send in a little video clip and then I'll post it on our Facebook story, Jordan. So I hope you do that because we love and miss you guys. Hi, Sam. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Nina. Thing 2.0, what's up? <laughs> Eve, how you doing? Uh, okay, just waiting on Mr. Charlie Plummer. It's just now eight o'clock. I'm sure he'll be with us any moment, you guys, and we can ask him questions. I'm gonna ask him questions. Um, hi, Juliet. Love you. Hi, guys. All right. Your dad's a policeman. Wow, Amy. Well, thank your dad for all of us because he's a hero and he's doing the best. Here we go, Charlie. View. Okay, go. Waiting for Charlie Plummer, you guys. He's coming on. Hi, Stace. All right. Hi. Hi, Charlie. It's been How's a long time. How are it you? It has been a long time. I'm good. How are you doing? Good. How long has it actually been? Or you probably don't know. I mean, it's probably been, gosh, it might, probably last time I saw you was when I was 11 or 12. So crazy. Eight years. Yeah. Hi, Maya. <laughs> That's your mom. Hey, yeah. what's up? Oh, family's probably gonna show up on here. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Charlie, I have to tell you, man, I just binge watched Looking for Alaska and every single dingle person on here tonight and everybody else in the world needs to see this. <laughs> your performance, I have to say, was so nuanced and beautiful and subtle. Oh, and thank you so much. No, truly. I mean, and that's something we try to teach our students is how to be subtle, because I think that's one of the hardest things for young actors. Totally. Can you tell me, is there like any methodology or any, you know, uh, method that you like to use in your work? Oh, man. I mean, I think it really honestly for me depends on the job. And I think for this one, it was pretty easy for me because I felt like, I mean, not easy, but the character was somebody that I had felt like I had known for since I first read the book, which was when I was 15. So I spent so much time with it that it felt somewhat natural to me. And I very much felt like I was that guy when I was 15 or 16. Okay. So that one was, but I really, I mean, I think the main thing for me is I remember so much just watching, honestly, like watching other people's work and, and seeing what just personally affected me. And then just trying to replicate that as best as, as, as I could. And, and especially when I was younger, I think that was helpful. Because I used to love theater. So I used to love being big and everything like that. And then I think when I got more interested in film and television, then I just became attracted to more work that was on the more subtle side, I guess you would say. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I'm pretty bad at explaining. But Not at all. I think, I think it's like it comes, well, first of all, I think it, you're a natural. And I, it, you, you grew up in kind of a theatrical family, right? Tell me about your, your background and how you got into acting. 
Yeah, so my parents are both in the business. My dad is a writer and a director. My mom's a theater actress and she's done film and TV too. And so when I was a little kid, you know, I was constantly around it. And then I think, I mean, your class was actually the first, my first ever experience with trying it out really on any scale. I had done some community theater stuff before, but especially on a professional level, that was very much my first thing. So really, I, they just allowed me to do that. And then I, I just was very fortunate. I met my manager at your class and then we're still yes, together 10 years later. <laughs> where Where is Kim Bedell of Zoom Talent? I hope she hops on. I know, because... I hope she's on here. She said she was gonna be on here, but. She's awesome. <laughs> she's such a wonderful manager. And I, okay, I'm gonna just, I mean, it'll probably be a little embarrassing to you, but. That workshop, I remember so well. First of all, we have an amazing picture of you when you were probably 11 or so. And you're <laughs> working opposite. I don't know if you realize this, but the boy that you were working opposite that day in the class is Tony winner Trent Kowalik of Billy Elliot fame. No way. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's you and Trent that I use that picture a lot. Wow. And you both went on to great things. And, <laughs> and we were working with a casting director who I have to give a shout out to, Gail Keller, who does a lot of amazing TV and yeah. film work. And she saw you in that class and she said to me, this Charlie, he's, he's special. He's, he's going places. And she, you were the only kid that she, I mean, you know, just to That's be honest. That's so sweet I mean, though. That's really nice. She said you were going places. I mean, Trent had already won the Tony. So we knew he, went, <laughs> he had already gone places. And she's like, this right, kid, right. he's going I places. I had places to go for sure. <laughs> and then Kim was at that class too. And right. she saw the same thing. So obviously it was just a natural it's you know it's a natural thing that you come by and i do believe it runs I, like talent runs in families i do firmly believe that i guess so it was really interesting i just read this book actually called outliers with by malcolm gladwell and it talks a lot about how your upbringing really matters in terms of your access and that's why i am beyond grateful for my parents deciding to do what they wanted to do and then also allowing me to be a part of that at a young age because i learned so much i mean like even being 12 and 13 and really working on sets for the first time, I learned so much. And I think that really has all kind of added to, to where I am today, obviously, but, but okay. there's still, there's still a long way to go. So <laughs> I'm very much, you know, but you're, but you're working, you're do, you're working and you, you have a yeah. lot of things I'm sure that are in the pipeline and you're, you're doing your thing and you seem to be working pretty consistently. You did an amazing movie. It came out in 2017 called all the money in the world, which was nominated for, Oscars, right? And it didn't, did Christopher Plummer win the Oscar for that? He did not win no. the Oscar, but he did get nominated for it. He no. won a few years earlier, I think, for that movie, Beginners, which was fantastic, but, but okay, yeah, so, he's so talented. Yeah. So going back, going back a few years now, what was your first, okay, so how many auditions would you estimate you went on before you booked your first job? Can you even remember? Oh gosh, or well, I remember my first audition ever was for Billy Elliot and it was like a, a huge cattle call type situation. You know, they probably saw like 500 kids or something. And I got down to the final five or six or whatever and I didn't get it. But I was like, after that, you know, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get the next one for sure. And then it's probably not another 40 auditions, 50 auditions, something like that before. I, easily, I mean, I remember for a long time and also there being stretches of like a year where, you know, there just wasn't, I'd get close on things, you know, I, I would keep getting close on things and it just wasn't the right, the right one. But I mean, genuinely looking back, if it all hadn't happened, like I'm so grateful that the things that didn't work out didn't work out because then I wouldn't get to be here, so. Right, but, exactly, but it yeah. all happens for a reason, right? So that's a good lesson for young actors who are starting yeah, out. Yeah, I heard, I heard Joey King, I did a talk with her actually, and she talked about it. When she was a kid, she like did the math and she had this equation that she put in and it turned out like one in every 150 auditions, she actually ended up getting the job. So that's what she always tells other actors. And I was like, that's a great line. I should, I should wow. steal that. But, it's you know, amazing, you right? Just, yeah, it's patience. It really is. And, and, and just that persistence, I think, more than anything. Mm -hmm. but, oh, my God. And she's so incredible. How amazing was that? Was the act? I, I mean, know. She's so, oh, my God. And it's crazy to be talking to her here and then get to watch a clip. And, like, she's so different. It was such a transformative she, thing for her. She's fabulous. Are you in L.A. right now or New York? Where you I'm in New York. I'm in Brooklyn right now at my apartment. So <laughs> I'm <laughs> <working> down. <laughs> nice. You live on your own and you're. I know. <laughs> this 
is wild, man. The last time I saw you, you were just a kid. I know. So, <laughs> I don't know if you even remember me. And I probably look, you know, 20 oh, years older. Of I, I mean, honestly, uh, that class really was everything to me. I mean, I really, uh, meeting Kim and everything. And, and I, I think I was even doing your classes through the Billy Elliot stuff and, and all that. That was hugely formative for me. So Aww. That's so really sweet. I love hearing yeah. that. No, it, it's genuine. So Billy Elliot. So wait, are you a dancer? I, this I didn't know. No, about. gosh, no. <laughs> but, but I think my headspace, you know, I really look back and I'm like, if I weren't naive about it back then, I don't think I would be here now. Because I, I had this mindset that was just like, oh, I'll figure it out. Like, oh, I need to tap dance. Okay, I'll figure it out when I have to. And so I was doing classes and stuff like that. But I can't. That's it all. I'm not going <laughs> to pretend that I have that skill. What about singing? Are you a musician? Because I see on your Instagram that you have a lot of musician friends. Is that a I do have a lot of musician friends, and I appreciate their work so much and have so much respect for what they do, and I cannot do anything close to what they can do. I can play guitar, and I can sing a little bit, but I could never do it on that scale, I don't think. That's, you know, a whole other world. For now, me. didn't you do a TV show and you got to work with your mom? Is this true? Yeah, both of my right. parents. Yeah, my dad actually came on to the show and became the head writer. And then both my mom and I were on the show, got on the show. And we Which ended show? up doing tell, it for tell three the years. Audience what it show? was called Granite Flats. And I don't know how you can watch it. It was on Netflix for a while. Netflix had it. Um, and I don't know if they still do. But, but yeah, and that was really, I mean, that was another example where I was getting to be on a set for, you know, three or four days a week eight to 10 hours a day when I was 12 years old to when I was 15. And like, to me, you know, obviously getting to do with my parents is a really special experience, but also just getting to have that practice of knowing what it's like to, to have that experience and be on a set is just hugely impactful to me. And then I think having the safety net of my parents there was really nice. As what well. is it like to work with your parents as a kid? Is it something I, <laughs> like, is it, is I, it fun? I used to compare it to being you know? in high school with your parents. It's like, you know, like they're, they know all the, the gossip too. <laughs> so <laughs> there's nowhere safe. Um, right. But obviously they were very respectful of me being a, a young teenager of my space and everything. But my whole family, we shot in Salt Lake City. We all lived out there. Oh, wow. Um, I was doing homeschool then. And so, yeah, it was, it was quite the experience, but, but. Now, what was your first professional gig ever? Do you remember? <sighs> I don't, I think it was probably like a short film or something. I remember my first job that I got that was kind of a big deal was this movie called Not Fade Away, which I actually never ended up seeing. <laughs> I still haven't seen it. No way. But I have like one scene in it and it was David Chase who did The Sopranos was doing it. And wow. um, it, I don't think it made much money or anything like that. Didn't really go, go anywhere, but it was a big deal. Cause he was obviously, my dad was such a fan of Sopranos. I was only 10 years old or something, so. Right. I, oh I my know. God. The Sopranos was, yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> David Chase, unbelievable. All right. Tell me, are you friends? I'm sure the people who love looking for Alaska want to know, are you great friends with your co-stars? Do you guys keep in touch? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we really formed such a bond because for, for me going into it, you know, I had been such a fan of the show for five or six years at that point. And, and I think I, there had been so much hype just within myself and then meeting people that were equally enthusiastic about it and had such a personal connection to it. And I remember the first night, cause we shot in Louisiana and the first night we all got there, um, the, the, I guess the main friends in the show, like me, Christine, Denny and Jay, we all hung out and we just all kind of, I think on our own had a moment of recognition where we all really saw that each person in the room was really the person for that character and and this story in this time and it was also so nice to have john green who wrote the book be so giving and we just got you know ev everything handed to us and all the opportunities to really get to dive in but but yeah because of that whole experience then we ended up shooting it for almost six months so wow. we got really close and obviously this show is very emotional and yes you know, i think we all saw sides of each other that probably not a lot of people have seen <laughs> of us <laughs> but but that's just what happens. I think that's what I really learned too is, you know, that's, that's I mean, whether it's theater or film, like the bonds that you create with those people really, they do feel like family. I mean, it's, it's, it's no joke. So, it's so yeah, really we've been really sick. fortunate that we've stayed in touch big time. Yeah.
it's super special, those bonds that you form with your fellow actors. So, mm -hmm. and that's a cool experience too, because everybody was, you know, it's a bunch of young people. So I would imagine you have a lot of people you could relate to on set, as opposed to maybe another film or TV show where, you know, maybe you're the youngest person on set, right? Totally, um, yeah. That was most of my experiences up until that point, really. I had done a couple things where I was working with young people more heavily, but, but really the bulk of my experience had been working with older actors, which is also, wonderful especially when you're working with people that you already admire you know getting to really learn from them like that so tell me who are some of your you know some of, name a couple of actors who really have influenced you in your work oh man i mean the guy that i go back to the most i think because i was 13 when i saw the play was um mark rylance because i saw him in jerusalem yeah and that just really blew me away and i think that's when i up until that point i didn't know you could do that as an actor, like what he did in that show. And I think that really just opened up my mind and in and, and just a different way. It was also kind of at the time when I was still kind of figuring out if I really wanted to do it, you know, and commit all the way or not with it. Obviously, you know, you don't have to do that at any age, but, <laughs> but, but I had that in my head and then I saw that and that really just inspired me so much. And then after that for film, River Phoenix was my big one. Um, I, I watched Stand By Me when I was 15, and then I watched every single other movie he did. And he really just inspired me so much. I think as a young actor, you know, seeing again that that, that can be done. Um, and then after that, and since then, I mean, his brother, Joaquin, I know, I'm, I'm a big Batman fan, so the Joker was really cool. But before that, you know, some of his other performances really have blown me away. And Philip Seymour Hoffman, and I mean, mm -hmm. Tilda Swinton is another one. I mean, there's so many, I, that's, they're really, I, I could go on and on, but. I know there's so many wonderful actors out there and you've picked some great ones. Mark Rylance, <laughs> that's an interesting one for a guy of your age to choose. I think that's incredible that you yeah, saw Yeah, I think it's Columbia. a family thing. Like my parents, my dad saw him in a show back when he was in college, I think, or, or fresh out of college. And, and after that, my dad was like, this is the greatest actor alive. And then yeah. since then we went and we, my whole family went out to London to go see him in Othello at the Globe. Like we're big <laughs> Mark Rylance fans. He's fabulous. He truly is one of a kind. And yeah. and River Phoenix was, of course. Do you get compared to him a lot? Because you guys have a similar look. And yeah, we got the long hair and the not eating animals. And <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah. Well, I like that. That's cool. Yeah. So those are some good. So to the kids out there who are watching, go watch some River Phoenix movies. You know, yeah, go do your homework. Out. Stand by me. Running on empty there's some really really phenomenal performances that he gave um yeah gone way too soon but i don't want to give any spoilers away regarding looking for alaska for those folks that maybe haven't seen it but you have to deal with some pretty heavy themes in that uh show there not in, in that mini series yeah like can we say, you know, death? And yeah, you love, can, I mean, love, yeah, you can say, if you don't want to know any spoilers, you can stop, or maybe you don't want people to stop watching. I don't know, whatever you want, I'll follow But you're you. dealing with young love, you're dealing with some, you know, really interesting themes. I, right. And um, so how did you, I mean, how do you approach text? Like, how do you approach it? Do you break down your, do you like score your script? Do you break everything down? Yeah, I mean, for that, you know, I was really fortunate in that I had the book where my character was the narrator. So I had so much from there. And then the scripts themselves, because they were episodic, they came to me over time. And so before we even went out to shoot, I think for me, like the before before you get to do something, I think you just want to put yourself in the best position to succeed. And really all for me, that is, is just reading the script as much as I possibly can and and coming up with ideas, but not trying to settle on any one thing that's that's the right thing, anything like that. Really just trying to be as open as possible and just ready to discover and I think be open to the other actors. And I think that's the thing that a guy like Mark Rylance uh, preaches a lot that I've really, really t uh, taken to heart, which is just being open to the people around you and that those people are there for a reason. And you can close yourself off and you might still give an interesting performance, but in my experience, it's just infinitely more interesting to open yourself and just connect with those other people. So then I really just read it as much as I possibly could. And then once we got out there, I just, I knew that the story, the heart of the story was these friendships. And and if if those didn't feel real, then the show wouldn't at all be worth watching. And so, no matter how fantastic everything else was, if that doesn't work, then what's the point? So I think I really just tried to put as much time into 
forming those bonds with those other guys and and just establishing trust because i think for me like i just really want everyone to to feel like this it's a safe space where they can try things and they can make mistakes and all that stuff and i think that's really for me how i get my best work so trying to establish that tone on set that's that's definitely something i try to do but Wow. That's pretty much it. I mean, I, you know, you sound I, like a, you sound like a man who's 70 years old who's been doing this forever. <laughs> I mean, you literally know your craft really well. I'm very oh, impressed. Thank so, you. <laughs> and you are such a good listener. That's something that I notice when you perform is that you're really able to listen. And I don't feel like you're anticipating your next line, which is a big problem for young actors. I really feel like you're in the character, almost like a method actor where you become that character and you're really able to listen and to receive and, I just, none of, I mean, uh, so subtle. Much. No, truly, truly subtle. I mean, amazing. And I, did, so would you say that, did the director help you sort of, um, well, first of all, I want to know, did you guys ever break up on set? Did you ever just like lose it in a dramatic moment and start laughing and- Oh, there... absolutely. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, Danny Love, who played the Colonel in the show, he's become one of my best friends in real life very much so and he just kills me all the time and we just had especially in the nicer episodes i mean the first you know chunk of episodes you know we're having a pretty good time and it's it's there are definitely some light moments and he would just kill me all the time and he was playing drunk once and that really i mean i think we had to like they had to hold a few times for us to stop laughing that's how much right. it's <laughs> so bad it got that's fun. That's so wonderful, though. Those are such good memories, I'm sure, for you that you'll have for forever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about it, too, is that I do get to look back. I, you know, I, I don't do it often enough, but it is really something to get to look back on these memories that, for me, just feel like mine. And then you completely forget that there's a whole production around <laughs> you and there's, you're making this story and everything. I think when you just get so into it you can forget that and so it is something to get to see that we did actually make something out of those memories but you, you definitely did did you guys um uh, did your director do any like bonding exercises for the cast when you first met you know what what did you do to get to know yeah each other? she did we had this wonderful woman named sarah dina smith who did the first episode and we had about a month i think well before we actually started shooting that we were just down in louisiana and so we would have individual meetings with her and we would have meetings with the costume people and we would hang out with each other and sometimes we would have group rehearsals and I know like uh Christine and Jay and Danny had a bunch of rehearsals on their own to kind of establish their dynamic because obviously when we meet them they've been friends for a while so I think they wanted that to feel a little lived in um but but yeah I think I mean I'm a huge I I think rehearsal especially that kind of rehearsal can be so beneficial because again I think for me it's it's just setting yourself up for success and how you can personally as an individual do that for yourself. And for me, it really is getting that kind of creativity, just, just moving, you know, and if you can do that for a month before you actually start putting stuff down, then, then that's fantastic. But did you guys get to rehearse a lot? I know not, you know, every show or film, do you, do you get, a, you know, necessarily a lot of rehearsal time? Did you get rehearsal time? Let's we say did. all the money in the world. Like what, that was an interesting one because somebody we got didn't. Tired. Yeah, no, we didn't as much on that. I think that was that. I mean, that was just also just a very different type of, you know, because Alaska is all about the the, the hearts of these characters. I think they wanted to invest that time and in, in being able to have us get to know each other. And and I really give that up to the producers for for being able to acknowledge that before we started um, and the importance of that. But all the money, I think, because you know, you've got you've got this you know no no shade to alaska or anything like that but when you've got ridley scott kind of manning the ship i think most people just kind of are like whatever you want to do man like we'll follow in line and um and i think that was kind of the tone so we got there i think i had a week before we actually started shooting but but then we got into it and and we did have a couple rehearsals actually I, we had more more so meetings. Ridley doesn't really do rehearsals. He'll, he just likes to meet with you and talk through things and and maybe you and another actor and just kind of he just lets you know kind of the idea that he has going into it and then you give your ideas if you have any and then wow that was an incredible <laughs> cast we're talking mark Wahlberg, christopher Plummer, charlie Plummer, and <laughs> michelle williams i mean come on yeah. what was it like playing with these you know these like superheroes in our industry were you i mean how were you intimidated when you first got on set or were oh, you just absolutely. only comfortable 
No, gosh, no. I don't know how people do that. I mean, I try not to be starstruck and be like, but I'm definitely nervous. I, especially with people that I've personally been watching their work and admiring their work since I was a little kid. And I mean, especially with Michelle, like, you know, Brokeback Mountain is one of my favorite movies and so much of her work. And, and I think it's always like, you want to hope that everyone's nice, but you never know. And on that, I just got really, really lucky that she was so kind. And, and Ridley was also so kind in that he would always, at the end of every week, he'd have the cast have like a big dinner at this really, really nice restaurant um, where we were staying. And we would eat together for like four or five hours at the end of every week. And that was just really nice. Again, kind of building that community. And I think to me, that's the stuff that I respond best to. And that very much comes from theater for me and, and guys like Rylance. I've heard that he likes to have like slumber parties with his cast and stuff like that. Just those little things that I think really do have an effect on the work and, and can build that trust. But, but yeah, it was so surreal. I mean, I remember having so many moments where I was just, oh my God, you know, I can't oh, believe. I, that was, was, would you say that was your big break or what was your big break? I don't know if I've had a big break. Wow. I mean, I, you know, I think for me, like I've had a lot of, I've been so incredibly fortunate with the opportunities that I've gotten. And I've had in the sense of uh, that I've gotten to learn so much and, and have these incredible personal experiences on jobs. I've had a ton of big breaks, but in terms of like ever having a moment of like, wow, this was my, you know, I don't know if I've ever really, I mean, I guess, you know, all the money was like my first, job where I was working on a really big set and working mm -hmm. with people that I had, you know, respected for such a long time like that. But I'd also just done a film, um, which was a small indie film, but I just worked with Steve Buscemi mm -hmm. and he's also one of my all time here. So, it's, you know, for me, like I, I'd been getting that experience for a while, getting to learn from these guys, but. but you yeah, worked I with Steve Buscemi in the movie Lean on Pete, which I'm sure we can um, find somewhere. Where do you know where we can watch that? It's on, on Amazon, I think still. Okay, but great. you can also get it on iTunes and all that. So oh, great. And then, <laughs> I'm such an old lady, I don't even know about these things. All right, so Steve Buscemi, but didn't you work with him also on Boardwalk Empire? Or I did. That? Yeah, no, that's true. I did when I was 12. I think that was my, that was my first, I guess that was probably my first big break, actually. Right. Because <laughs> um, I, I, I ended up doing like eight episodes, which was a really big deal at the time. And I probably had three lines in the whole show. Um, but getting to just watch him and, and Shay Wiggum, who played my dad on the show, and I, that was just something else. And I think for me, like, I, I'm most fortunate in the sense that I've been getting to watch these guys up close, who I just really respect both artistically and just as humans. But, but getting to do that at such a young age, I think is just invaluable. But, but yeah, I did get to do that. I mean, I only what got to do that for a day, but. But yeah, and then it was really cool to get Julian on Pete with him too. Now that was a huge show too. That was a huge hit. So what was that like for you? Because you, you were how old when you shot Boardwalk Empire? Probably 12. I mean, but it was one of those shows that like my dad's friends loved, but none of my friends knew about right. it. Right. It, it appeals to a lo an older audience for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. Especially at that age. Uh, yeah. But yeah. But so how did you feel the first day on set? You knew what a big deal it was, right? I mean, how did it feel? So to I could honestly, I couldn't tell you what, because I think for me, like, you know, I respected all these people because, I, you know, with Steve, I had seen his work and I'd seen a little bit of the show, I think then. I think my dad showed me a bit of it, but, but I was so like, you know, my big goal was I wanted to be on Broadway. So for me, that was the ultimate. Um, so, you know, not that Boardwalk Empire wasn't great too, but, but I think that was, I don't know if I saw it as like, oh my God, this is my big, I was, I was very, I, you know, I've always had long hair and I think I was most uncomfortable that they cut my hair really short because it's a period show. Right, right. <laughs> so I was just kind of sitting in that awkwardness the whole time, but, but trying to, you know, pick up as much information as I could. So you said that you wanted to be on Broadway at the time, that that was your dream. Do you have goals to one day make it to Broadway? I always, I think that will always, because of that being really my first I remember when I first was like, I want to do this. That was my goal. And so I think I'll always have a special place. And if I ever get that opportunity, I'm definitely going to reflect heavily on, on little nine-year-old Charlie who <laughs> wanted that so badly. You, but, see, you seem to do a lot of like dramas. Am I wrong? Have, I mean, there was obviously, there were comedic elements in Alaska for sure. Right. But um, mostly, yeah, mostly dramas. But mostly it was more like serial comic slash dramatic. 
do you do you have any goals like for what 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 do you what do you want to do do you want to explore comedy more what what is something sure. you want to explore yeah i mean i think i'm open to everything i think that's the other thing that all my favorite actors do which is they rarely do or they try desperately not to do the same thing more than once and so whether that is in the form of comedy or a musical or whatever a western i mean to me as long as i really connect with the script and the character and and ultimately the director then it can be absolutely anything i think the 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 stranger the better for sure because you know that's that's definitely what i think it, i like being put in a place where i know if i don't work really hard that i'm gonna look like a, a fool so then i have to work really hard right. so well, you're doing a good job of it let me tell you. Oh, thank you so so what advice do you have for you know well there's another question. Let, let me start by asking you. I'm sure you get recognized on the street, right? I'm sure that happens from... I mean, not these days. No? <laughs> Definitely. No? But, but I mean, a little bit, you know, every once in a while, but but it's pretty, you but know, and everyone's always anonymous. very respectful. Yeah, I mean, especially you know, here in New York, I think people just don't, they're just like, oh, it's like, oh, cool. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's that guy from, right. Oh, I love Right. Him. I think yeah. I saw him maybe in a, yeah. <laughs> But when you're in California, is it a different thing? Or if you're in another state where people are, you know, they don't get to see no, things I mean, so often. I guess, I mean, I'm I mostly mean, here. Home. So people have come up to me here, but they're always very respectful. You know, they just kind of tap me on the shoulder and they're just like, we were, I, you know, I really loved your show or whatever it is. And it's always very nice. And I think because my work is pretty obscure on a bigger scale, like if anyone is really that much of a, a fan of mine, then they're probably not, you know, that crazy or weird or anything right. so they've right. been very nice. so how do you stay grounded though charlie and this is like a lesson for our students who are watching because you know you you're a young actor and this this could go to your head you know you're working with some incredible people wonderful actors wonderful directors amazing writers how do you stay grounded what what is your um advice to young actors i think you know it's that's that's really i think it's an everyday thing and i think you really have to just do your best at it every day but for me it really comes from having a, a a tight circle with my family and my close friends and loved ones and and i think for me like making sure that i'm in touch with them because i know that they know me better than anybody else and if i'm not doing so well you know they're they're definitely going to speak up and i think just having those people around you is is honestly most important and people that you can genuinely trust and um i'm just really fortunate you know like I, I definitely haven't always had that, but especially in the last few years, I've been really fortunate in, in getting to meet some people that have just really been those people for me. But, but other than that, I think, you know, I think it's just always good to humble yourself and know that you have, everyone has so much to learn and, 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 and so much to grow and, 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 and just always kind of keeping that in the rear view, no matter what, and just remembering that, that that's really what's going on here. And and I think for me, like, that helps when I'm really high because then I can remember, okay, you know, don't get too high. Like, <laughs> right. you know, there's lessons here. And it also helps me when I get really low because, of course, there's so much there as well. So so just trying to do that as much as possible on a daily basis. But but it's, you know, it's tough, especially in this business because the, the up and ups and downs are crazy. And, and I think everyone's just trying to figure it out and just trying to do their best. And... And, you How know. did you deal with rejection when you were younger, you know, when, because there's a lot of no's in this business, right? You're going to get a lot of Absolutely. no's before you get a yes, right? Yeah. So how did you personally deal with not getting a part that you really had your heart set on? <laughs> not, not in ways that I would be proud of today. I mean, <laughs> I, I, you know, I had a lot of experiences where, which I think, absolutely, I mean, I know it's kind of a cliche, but, but I, I really genuinely am grateful that, that, I went through those experiences because I really think that's that's such a big part of this job is having that strength. And I think being able to really, you have to really ask yourself when you go through that heartbreak, because I really think it it is kind of a form of heartbreak if you really form a connection with that story and that character, and then you find out that you're never going to get that opportunity with that, then that, mm -hmm. it really hurts. And so I think that experience forces at least for me it would really force me to always ask myself do you want to keep doing this mm -hmm. and is this still worth it and I think I just 
I mean, I remember getting to one point with one job that was like my ultimate dream job that I wanted so, so badly. And it got down to me and a couple other guys and I didn't get it. And, it, you know, I was just so devastated. And I remember even saying before, like, if I don't get this job, then I'm just going to quit. <laughs> and, all that right. stuff. and I didn't get the job. And then I really had to look at myself in the mirror and be like, all right, are you going to quit? Are you going to, is that it? Like, is that really how you want this to go? And I think no matter what, I just have never been able to kick doing this. I just love it too much. And, and you know, I've, I've gone to really low places on the journey, but I think no matter what, I just always keep coming back to it. So I think it's just really, yeah, I, 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 I think those are incredibly important though, especially when you're young, because it, it, it can get really comfortable hearing yeses a lot, but it's always, I think you really find out who you truly are in, in the business when, when you've heard a bunch of no's. Right. And do you see yourself at any point in your career, maybe, do, you know, writing or directing or doing something else other than acting? Or right now, are you just focused on acting? 100%. I mean, definitely right now, I think I'm focused on that acting because I feel like I have so much to learn still. And, and I don't feel like I'm just ready to contribute in right. that way right now. But I mean, I would love to, I think if it if it ends up happening that way, where I get to be a part of writing something or, or directing, I would love that, especially producing. I mean, again, like I'm, I have a lot of friends who are also in the business and, you know, I, I get to watch them and some of them have written stuff that they've done and, and are, are producing on projects and stuff like that. So getting to see that from their perspective has been really cool. So if that happened, I would, you know, absolutely welcome it. But well, you definitely have writing is probably in your blood since your dad's a great writer. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, dad... My little brother is doing that now. So I think oh, I'm yeah? going to let him have that. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to be, he's obsessed now with screenwriting. So great. So How old go. is he? Yeah. How old is your little bro? He, he's 14. So he's coming up. Yeah. Oh. And how old are <laughs> you now, Charlie? I forget. How old are you? Are I'm you... 20 now. Right. That's what I yeah. thought. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. wow. Oh, gosh. I've been doing <laughs> no. this for a long time. <laughs> <You're> old. <laughs> I'm very so, grateful. <laughs> this was awesome. Let me see if there's anything else. I want to rack my brain. Maybe we can, yeah. you know, I think some people have questions. Should we take some questions? Absolutely. Go I'll for try it. To I'm so bad at this. Charlie, this is my second live. Okay. My this second is probably live. my second live, too. So I have <laughs> no idea how to do it. <laughs> Let me see if I can. I, I think there's right, a question mark, and that might be the a question that somebody submitted. Okay. okay. Uh, you got a lot of like, you know, favorite actor. You're such a great actor. Um, how did you even find the character and, and embody it so well in looking for Alaska? Was Adit's question. I think that's your name. Um, well, for me, I when I read the book, the character of Pudge was someone that to me, especially before this, I mean, I don't want to spoil it, but before this thing, this event occurs in the story. Um, I really saw Pudge as a pretty fragile guy. I think he hadn't really experienced a lot yet and he was so ready to take on life, but he hadn't heard the nose essentially. He hadn't kind of fallen down at all yet. So I really wanted him to be fragile. And I think for, for me that just meant physically kind of, I knew I wanted to look really skinny because obviously it's mentioned a lot in the book, but I also thought that kind of added to the fragility thing. And then I just kind of, he, you know, he's a guy who's hiding, I think, from his life so much uh, up until he doesn't want to hide from it anymore. And he falls in love and meets these friends, but especially when we first meet him. Um, so just kind of like physically, you know, shuffling and, and kind of keeping my head down and slouching as much as possible. And then over the course of the story, as those things happen, trying to open up my body as much as possible and, and gain that strength. But but yeah, I really kind of wanted him to feel like a, a really fragile, like his bones were made of glass type of guy. Interesting. Did you have to lose weight for this role or, you know, because I, I mean, I kind of did. I was already kind of thin. I don't know how much I, I didn't like meet with a nutritionist or anything like right. that, but I, I got you didn't on. pull a walking Phoenix or anything. <laughs> I mean, no, I was, I mean, at one, I, my diet before was like, I would just eat an apple a day, like not a day, but like. I would eat maybe like an apple and then like one meal a day. So I was like, I was consciously not eating that much, which is not really smart. And I wouldn't advise that, but, right. but yeah, I, I was that. But then when we started shooting, I'm vegan. So we were shooting in Louisiana, so they didn't really have much food for me down there. So no. I also wasn't eating that much. No. But, 
but yeah and then you just get stressed out about the job and so then you forget about eating then too but but yeah it all just kind of happened to work out that way <laughs> I, well, you, they must have seen you in the part and been like, okay, he's, he, he has this character because he's got the right physical, you know, traits, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I mean. can't get it if you're heavy. That's just not. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe, I, you know, if I were happened to be really heavy at the time, I think I would have just told them, like, don't worry. <laughs> I'll be at this weight by the time we need to shoot. Right, right. Uh, dedication, this. dedication. I love it. <laughs> um, so, so somebody had asked how you met how you got rep well if, if you missed the beginning of this charlie actually met his manager kim Vidal of zoom talent who we love um at our workshop we did a workshop you know we do lots of workshops and and showcases with agents managers casting directors yada yada what have you and that's how charlie got picked up um and then did kim introduce you to your agent from there kim, yeah kim did introduce me to my first agent um right and and then i ended up meeting through Kim, my other manager, a couple of years later, uh, this woman, Margo Menzel, who I've also been with ever since. Um, and yeah, I mean, really, but Kim was, was absolutely my first real contact in the business at all. And, and you know, I hope it, it very much stays that way for as long as it possibly can. So good, good. Yeah, she's the best. All right, let's see if we have another question that isn't all about, uh, let's see. Um, how did you even find the character? Well, we answered that. Um, Charlie, do you watch anime? If so, like, what's your favorite one? I I don't watch anime anymore. Um, but when I was younger, I used to watch Naruto and I used to watch One Piece and um, other ones as well. I was really into it. I went to Japan. I was really into Pokemon. That was my main thing. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, have you grown out of that now? Of it. I haven't. I haven't gotten back into it. Um, but I probably should. I've heard you know people. People really love it. So yeah, yeah. we'll give it another shot. <laughs> Pokemon. All right. One more question. Let me see. What do we got here? Um, okay. Well, somebody asked how old you are. We already determined that you're twenty. Who are your style icons? I like that one. Hold oh, on. Oh, wow. That's a good question. Yeah. That's a really good. I, wow. Um, it's actually really funny because I just watched The Big Lebowski yesterday, and I would say the dude is definitely one of my, easily one of my style icons. Um, comfortability is key. <laughs> um, so you want to look like that's hysterical. Yeah. And, and then probably I'm going to shout out my friend Kelvin, um, who's a, another super talented actor. Um, and he's, he's one of my style icons. I steal so much from him and I don't think anybody knows it, but I'm going to give him the credit now. <laughs> give um, us his last name for those. Kelvin listeners. Harrison. Yeah. He's phenomenal. He, he was in this movie last year called Loose and another movie called Waves. Um, he's a really, really talented young actor. Go, if you're a young actor, go watch his stuff. Cause I personally think he's the best young actor out here today. Um, wow, how did you guys meet? We did a film together a couple years ago called Gully. Um, and it was a really, a really tough to watch film. I don't recommend any young people watching it. It's very violent and stuff, but we ended up becoming best friends working on it and then have just stayed that way ever since but but he's so inspiring to me honestly I mean I I really like walk every time I see a performance of his I'm just so so blown away so check out his stuff for sure if you we need will to I will for sure <laughs> thank you for that recommendation now let me ask you something the clove hitch killer what's it like doing a you know a, a serial killer crime slash horror film I had never done one before and it was it was fun it was fun I mean I'm I'm so bad I think at like action films and these movies because I'm always thinking about the dialogue and stuff and then I don't you know I'm not thinking about like the tension of it and, and stuff like that so so it was a really interesting experience for me because I really hadn't gotten that experience before and also yeah. Dylan McDermott who played my dad in the film who was very scary was was method the whole time and so we had to call on the character's name and that was a little unnerving and it was just kind of the whole thing was you know it was it was pretty surreal but, but I, didn't know he was a method, I didn't know he was a method actor yeah he was yeah. I mean so we met a few times before we started and you know I, I met him as he is and then as soon as we got out there it was kind of a transformative part for him like he shaved his head a little bit and he had a belly and everything and I think he just really wanted to be in it. Um, 
and he has a really interesting story with with the whole character in the story too but but yeah but so that was that was an especially kind of chilling aspect of the shooting experience but <laughs> yes but, yeah. but it was fun it was a lot of fun so cool if you guys need to learn a little bit more about method you know the method um you should probably do a little research but basically essentially the character you know the, the actor becomes the character and they really don't break character even in between shooting so yeah. for the duration of filming or the duration of the job they are that character so there's some wonderful actors out there who employ that method but it is it's a little bit extreme you know daunting, yeah <laughs> you could take some elements of that right i mean you take some elements of it into your work very much so yeah i mean i think yeah i i would not describe myself as a method actor but i think for for whatever reason it always just ends up happening that usually towards the end of it i very much feel like what's going on in my personal life is completely in line with what's happening with the character in some way so i think i think that's that's my thing is just like being open to that because that's probably happening all the time but i think once you really open yourself to that being a possibility then right you access and you should it. always know like what you have in common with your character that's something that a director that we work with often says like what do you have in common with your character yeah you find that you find yourself so you find yourself even let's say maybe not after the film or, or TV show is done, do you find yourself a bit of Charlie in these characters? Do you bring I mean, yourself course. to the role? I think the reason that I started acting too was I was a really shy kid. And so it, it gave me an opportunity to say that I was somebody else and say like, this is a character and then I'm gonna, you know, dance and sing and stuff like that. But in truth, of course it's me. And of course it's a part of me. And so I think absolutely, um, the heart of the character is always something that I share, but I really look at it like the character is just the collaboration between the actor and the writing. And then also everything else that's in your environment, whether it's the clothes, the set, whatever it is. And so, you know, it's really just a, a mix of all those things. And so of course you're in it as well, but, but yeah, but, but there's also a lot of other things going on too for me. We're going to lighten the mood with one last question. Some people want to know if you're dating anybody. <laughs> that seems to be a consistent thing is who are you dating are you dating christine you know that, that's a question that seems to be coming yeah. up again and again charlie <laughs> oh no i was like oh we're so close we're like <laughs> charlie i love you there's the a lot of that <laughs> we're so close um yeah 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 we can talk i'm so bad at talking about these things i get so awkward i'm so like i start blushing and everything i'm really <laughs> Ah, uh, we but, don't have to go there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I'm just busting your chops, Charlie. We don't have to go there at all. You guys are adorable. All of your questions are great, by the way. Charlie, you spent 45 or 46 minutes with us here tonight. I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy life. I hope you're staying safe, though. I mean, I guess you're probably not doing that much right now. It's perfect timing for you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm getting to catch up on movies, Tiger King, all the all the fun yeah. things to watch. Yeah. Tiger King. Tiger King is incredible. I thought it was incredible. What I mean, uh, these people. So much. I know. So I, I, yeah, I don't even know where to start with it, but... <laughs> So much yeah. that is so disturbing and yet so fascinating all at the same so time. So fascinating, yeah. <laughs> Some serious characters. Pretty sad, too, I mean, in general. Yes. But definitely entertaining. And it's just so interesting that everyone seems to be watching it and talking about it. So very good time for them, for sure. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. For, well, not for the tech, not for Joe Exotic. <laughs> yeah, I know. Joe, Joe's behind oh, bars Joe. right now. <laughs> I guess he's getting his 15 minutes of fame, which is what he's always wanted, right? I know, I know. It's and and with the corona too, it's just a shame oh. you can't really enjoy it with with all of us. But right, but. <laughs> right. So yeah, so I mean, are, let me one last question: Are you reading scripts while you're while you're stuck in this uh, self quarantine situation here? Yeah, surprisingly, things have not really stopped, and I yeah, I mean, kind of more so. Just I I'm I'm really blessed in that I have some things lined up for hopefully when this is, you know, starting to slow down a bit, um, that those will start to happen. So I guess I'm really just gonna be looking at those scripts until until we start. But, but yeah, and then I mean, it's interesting. I think the business hasn't really stopped, though. It seems like I have a lot of friends that are still reading for stuff. Good. So that's good. I mean, you know, for, that makes for me really happy there. to hear. Yeah. It feels like a lot of things have just shut down, but to hear totally. that you're still getting scripts and reading them and thinking about the future, I think it's Yeah, really I think, important. you know, the business is definitely not stopping. And I think as soon as people can go back to work and 
then then people will be going back to work, especially in this industry. So full force ahead. Any any last words of advice for our young audience members out there tonight? Oh Maybe. man, I mean gosh i really i always feel like i'm never the person that should be giving advice so. someone's saying self-tape advice well you probably don't have to do you, you don't have to self-tape no i mean i have right? had to absolutely you i do you know, oh yeah sure the self-tape game never never ends man <laughs> okay <laughs> um, so but yeah i i mean i think self-tape advice i think you feeling like most the most comfortable that you can i, I actually personally prefer self tapes a lot of the time because because then you can really ease into it and you can kind of have a similar experience as if you were on set somewhat um, rather mm -hmm. than having to prepare so much for one moment and then if you if you don't do your best in that then it's over um, so I would just say trying to make yourself as comfortable as possible and and just you know getting all the technical stuff right and and yeah I mean sometimes working with acting coaches I think can really help or or just somebody that you feel like you can have a discussion with uh, in terms of the character and the scene and stuff like that, just so you can explore some stuff when you're doing it. But, but that's really all you can do, I think, so. When life gets back to normal, guys, we do offer self-taping services at our There office, you go, but... there you go. <laughs> oh, but right I, should've, now, I should've known, I would've been a great plug right there. <laughs> anyway, wait, I'll just tell the young actors, make sure that a lot of times we get self-tapes for things that we're doing, like agent showcases that are by audition only. And people will send us, you know, just invest in a really cheap tripod, you guys, 20 bucks. You know, it's oh, worth yeah. it, maybe invest in the background. Not like yeah. this background, I have too much going on. Right, have, white like, background. A, yeah, and yeah, honestly, any iPhone is good nowadays, so that's really it. Make sure your air conditioning's off. That's right. always something that I forget to do. <laughs> right, and your dog's not barking in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Basic things like that, and just yeah. follow instructions, y'all, and be prepared. That's Very pretty much, much all so. you can do, right? Just know what you're saying, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> you're great. You're awesome. I oh, love thank your... You, Jessica. I'm so uh, happy for you. We're so excited for all of your success, and I'm psyched that we could play a very small part in it. But it's exciting. Oh, a for huge us. part. What are you well, talking about? You are really got to give yourself more credit. I would really well, not have it, honestly. I really, if your well, class did not exist, I most likely would not be in this apartment right now. <laughs> you're very sweet. That's, a, that's supposed to be a heart, but it didn't really work out. That's that okay. Way. I'll do the other half. <laughs> you're better at All right, Charlie. Well, thank All you right. so much. Bye, Jessica. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. Bye. Bye okay. Have a good, lovely Let's... evening. Bye. You too. Bye. <laughs>